Cardinal Coffee. Got you guys some coffees. Yeah, boy. One, really? two, three, four. Yo. That one. Mm, Let me uh, tell you the problem with living up on a mountain with a crazy steep road is when you get going up like this <laughs> steep and you're not looking, one of the coffees just goes whoop right into your back seat. Oh, man. I think that was yours, bro. And the rest of Dang. them. Are they all coffee? They're about half full now. They, they I don't even drink coffee. They sh okay, well, then we're good. Then we got three. <laughs> <laughs> It's another beautiful day and we're on site and today we're gonna get to do some framing where we have intersecting roof pitches, which is gonna be super fun. So let's figure out how to do that. Two bucks. I like that. Can it's got a 50 pound rating. Can't ever lose your pencil and you could get a 50 pound pencil. Well, see when I put, <laughs> when I carry. <laughs> you know, the house kind of builds itself. When you think about what you're gonna do next, you can't just do whatever you wanna do next. The house sort of demands what you'll do next because you can't do this till that's done and that can't be done till this thing is done. And then you realize you can't even do that because you can't, because the next thing. And so you end up realizing, oh, this is what I have to do because there's so many other things that build upon the next thing. So what are we gonna do? <laughs> well, we gotta stud in that wall and put plywood on it. Okay. Or OSB. There you go. Here's something really smart that the circular saw designers have built into the saws that you may not know about. The blade is exactly an inch and a half from one edge of the base plate. We've got different brands here and even battery saws versus plug-in electric saws. I have seen this on every saw I've ever used basically. And it's a really functional feature when you wanna save some time, you don't wanna mark a line, but you wanna cut an inch and a half off of something. And today I need to cut an inch and a half off of a bunch of pieces here and be efficient and quick and not have to measure them. I wanna jump in while we're on the topic of circular saws. We're saving time on these kind of non-critical cuts. These aren't stair stringers or anything by cutting past our line in the long direction so that on the back side of the board, our blade actually makes it to the line and our piece will just drop out without having to get out the handsaw and finish the cut. That saves a lot of time. But on our cross cut, we don't wanna cut past the line cause there's, there's not a lot of material left. So what we're doing is pro tip, I think, tipping the board or tipping the saw so that the blade gets to the line on the back side without cutting way past on the front side. Yeah, and it's way faster than setting the depth of your saw to be only an inch and a half and then yeah. just turning and the then, board yeah. on, on the edge. You could do it that way you too. You can leave, but... yeah, leave it at full depth, just tip it yeah. back. I don't like, it, I don't like it. it. Oh, oh, whoa, yep. okay, yep. all right. Oh, yep. I didn't see that coming. Yep. guys going back and adding some blocking here to space this fascia board out to the right number because somebody cut it off inch monster that was me somebody. i marked 21 and a half instead of 22 and a half I mean, it, happens it was happens. right at that end and then an inch short at this end so my bad my b guys yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys got it fixed for our overhangs here we've got this gable end coming down to our rake fascia and they're gonna connect at some point out here and we need to figure out where that is because at that point it's gonna turn up and go this way. We could have just run this all the way through sort of as a faux little overhang and you see that done a lot just as a uh, detail. But in this case, since it's a low pitch gable, I think it's gonna make that gable end look too small and squatty. Yeah, So we're squatified. Just squatified. So we're just, gonna, we're just gonna clip this off and just turn it up the hill. Now we're not using any fancy math to determine the crossing points here. Uh, we're not doing anything elaborate. It's actually extremely low tech. We're just sighting and using a string and a level to determine if the top of this board is in plane, if you will, 
with the top of those boards. Yep. So with just one flat plane surface, we've established that this is the most in plane with those as we can get it. Make sure you don't mess up like I did and mark an inch off Bro, on one end. The best of us, man. I know. I just just found I do that all out. The time. See, I do all the time to make y'all feel better. So when you all do it, it's not good feel. Jono just marked center on this end and center on that end and snapped the line. And in the center, you got five and three eighths one way. Four on the other. That's how crown that board is. Wow. That's one of the worst ones I've seen in a while. Why y'all remarking those? Remember what I told you it happens to the best of us? <laughs> it also happens to the worst of us. Okay. <laughs> well, you caught it before you cut them all, at least. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> three hot pockets, huh? Yeah. Did you know if you made it when you got three hot pockets? Right? I know. Triple I Tuesday. might be paying you too much. I don't know, man. <laughs> Living this best life with three hot pockets. four, but you don't pay me enough. Right now, Ray and I are on the walk plank recovery team. That means that we forgot to get these out of here before we put the sheathing on the ends on the gables. And now we had to cut a rafter loose to like tip them up. And anyway, we're gonna use them if we can get them out of here. Got our fascia boards on. Now it's the fun part where we get to connect this little valley together. And I'm assuming what we're gonna do first is put up a sleeper board. Oh yeah. That way, Jamie's putting a nailer to nail the end of it there. Oh, this is exciting. This is very small version of the normal thing, but it's still just as exciting. Scaled down. Sleeper, is that what it's called? We're gonna nail this sleeper board down to the surface of this roof framing, but the very top corner of it is going to be in plane with this surface so that this sheathing will go across and actually nail across the point. That'll be the only the point corner. of contact. The, the corner of the edge. It's kind of hard to describe. Otherwise, we'd have to rip that bevel on the sleeper. Yeah, and it would be hard to really find out what that angle is. It is hard. And there's, it doesn't no, really matter, though. there's no point in wasting time to figure it out, actually. So that's why we're not doing it. 101. 101 even. Is that square? No, now you're gonna come back this way, 45. Long to long. Long to long on the same edge of the board. Pretty good. All right, go ahead and tack it there. our rafters are sticking up like half five eighths here notice also our sleeper is sticking up about a half five eighths there so that means if we go from five eighths above this to the corner of this anywhere now with a little rafter it's going to be in plane with all of these rafters which is what we want that's what we need now that our sleeper is in position what we need to do is continue our 24 inch on center layout from the rafters over here to our board so my next one's at four foot i'm going to actually slide down keeping my tape perpendicular to these rafters that's critical and then mark where it crosses the corner that's where it is right there and x ahead. and then x uphill yep so that's the long point yes yeah, so that point right there is the long point and the rafter will sit like right there and it's x ahead because we're hooking on these instead of butting that would switch that. Yeah. Hey, we missed this uh, critical pro tip. Make sure that the rafter you're hooking on is a straight rafter. If, if your rafter is curved or bowed really badly to the side and you hook in the middle of it and pull your layout, you'll be off. Yeah, this roof is really short, so there's not much risk for that, but on a rafter that's 20 feet long, you gotta make a sure very it, good chance yeah. that could be a problem. Thank you. 
All the screws we're using in the roof framing here are structural GRK screws. Not neck screws. Not the Not same thing. We've got our layout now on our sleeper board and on our band board on our wall there. And we're gonna cut a rafter, but this is the part that tricks people up, even us sometimes, is getting the angle that's gonna lay on our sleeper board correct. It's a compound angle. It can be tricky, but let's try to simplify here. We know that our vertical or plumb cut is about 25 degrees. We're just gonna say it is for numbers. And we know that the two cuts have to add up to 90 degrees. That's right. Okay, we're just gonna say that's a given. 90 degrees minus 25 degrees is 65 degrees. That's right. For the numbers. So that is the angle of the cut. Now the bevel, the bevel is simply whatever roof pitch it's falling okay. onto. And luckily we know that's a 512 pitch as well. In this case, it's 512. You're gonna take that 25 degree angle and put it on the bevel of your saw. Yep. Now you still are not there yet because you could still screw it up big time. You gotta cut from the right side of the board. Yes, and depending on whether it's a left or a right side of the valley or of a hip, in this case, we only have one side, so they're all gonna be the same orientation. You have to lay it out and cut from the right direction to make the bevel go the right way. Mm. We've maybe, messed maybe up plenty. Maybe it is hard. <laughs> it is hard. Easy. It is hard. There's no, there's no easy. Well, we've got one cut here, okay. and I was gonna just demonstrate what that looks like with the bevel and the angle, and we cut from this side so that it would lay on this, right? So let's lay it into place. Okay. See, she works. All right. Never mind my scribble there. All there right, we go. Right about there. Yep, yep, right there. Okay, that looks good. In case anybody wonders why we use such a wide board here for the sleeper, it's because the angle gets really long on this cut right here and you want this to be supported the whole width of the angle cut. Plus the rafters could land in between other rafters. Sometimes yep. they do and that actually gives enough strength for it to support the end of the rafter. Uh, I'm gonna add a little nailer under here and that's just gonna help add support to this long angle cut of the plywood, the OSB. <laughs> Son of a gun! <laughs> Paige from Huber said I have to do 22 push-ups every time I say plywood. <laughs> I told her I'm gonna get ripped in no time. Yeah. Uh, what it's gonna do, see the distance is greater than 24 inches, which is kind of like the max span you want for your edges. Yeah. And this is just gonna add a little edge support. That's all it is. A little support. Just a little Everybody support. Everybody needs a little support every now and then. I know, you don't want it to sag. No. No. We're going to do something a little strange here, but we're going to start the sheathing at the top of the roof instead of the bottom. The reason is we have a long straight line to align with the ridge here versus starting down in a tiny little triangle corner, which could then end up not being parallel to the ridge. This is a better way to keep things true. True. True that. I think today's show is gonna make people's brain hurt. What do you think? Do you understand the valley cuts now? No. You do. No, I do. I do. I would just never be able to do it by myself. Something really weird with lumber prices is happening still. One of my local suppliers is out of pressure treated wood and he's not gonna buy anymore huh. until prices come down. Last time he bought a bunch of lumber while prices were high. And then because the price was high, he had to sell it high and nobody wanted to buy it huh. until prices fell again. And then he had to sell it for less than he paid for it. Whoops, that's hard to make money like that. So this time he said, I'm not buying lumber again until the prices come down. I can't say I blame him. I don't blame him at all, but uh, it's a bad situation any way you look at it. You got black stuff on your face. It's just chalk, I think. <laughs> I hope it is. Why don't you just go to Lowe's and buy it and then go and sell it his place? It's a good idea. Genius. <laughs> Get it all. Now I know people are gonna be asking me, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put it out there. Why didn't we connect these two porch roof lines in a hip roof out here? And there's two reasons. One's really simple. That kind of makes it look like a farmhousey kind of thing with the wraparound porch. That's not what we're going for as far as the look goes. And number two is this deck over here is six foot deep. That one's 10. So if we did do a hip roof connection, the hip would be this 
weird angle. It wouldn't be a nice 45 off the corner of the house hip. Be kind of a weird long hip that doesn't look asymmetrical real good. hip. An asymmetrical hip. There you go. That's why we didn't do it. Sometimes when you're cutting a short piece of wood like this and you got an angled cut to make and you have to hold the guard back manually to get your cut started because that doesn't want to cooperate on the angle, the board will just want to walk away from you because you're not holding it. You're holding this and that and, and the board is just doing like that. It's right? frustrating. Yeah. Hey, and I've seen this happen. Like this can get super frustrating. It's hard to watch. <laughs> it's, it's hard to watch. Yeah. So there's three things you could do to avoid this. And this is a real problem. I'm not just making up a fake problem for a video. So number one is you have a buddy. Just hold, hey buddy, hold my board down. Mm. So I can make- <laughs> Hey so, buddy, grab my board. So I can make this cut easily. Number two, you just take a screw and zip it into your cut station. And then maybe two even, and it holds it still. But if you're a real pro carpenter and you don't even want to take the time to use a screw, what do you think you do? Um, I have no idea. You saddle that thing up. There you it is. Saddle up the board, With hold the your guard back, and you make your cut. So, I think we learned that That's from true. our dad that if you really just need to hold it down, you just throw your leg and saddle that baby up and you cut it. This could go in a whole different It's like a big, it's a big <laughs> clamp, you know? So if you see somebody do that, you know they've been around, you know the, block. Been around the block. <laughs> you want to try it, Ray? Go ahead. Give it a shot, bud. See what you got. Whoa! People are headed home. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> yeah. Roofs are done, so I say we call it a day. I think that's a good plan. We got a good plan for tomorrow. You know what that is? Mm, I think it's stairs, isn't it? Building stairs. That'll be real fun. I think it will be. I'm I'm just glad there's no basement. I yeah, that's right. I don't remember the last house that only had one set of stairs. I don't either. They all have two, and it's like, oh. Yeah. Right? That's what it's so like. So one set will be fun, though. I think so. We do need to get our rope. It's still on the top roof. It'll come down eventually, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Looks amazing. So good. Completely organized. Yeah. Did you roll this truck on the way to work? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the sad part. <laughs> You've just inspired me to do better. This is terrible. When's your birthday? You should get some boxes. I don't know. I probably have boxes. So I'm just too lazy to organize like this stuff. So like, you need a Friday organizer guy. You're hired. <laughs> what are you doing this Friday? Make my truck look like your truck, okay? That could. Yeah.